بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين ثم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد Dear viewers السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته We are thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that has blessed us to discuss the verses of the Holy Quran and the narrations of Ahlul Bayt alayhum salam We are discussing Surah Al-Hamd we are blessed to discuss Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim and Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen and ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Maliki Yawm al-Din Inshallah in this episode we will discuss Iyaka na'abudu wa Iyaka nasta'een You alone do we worship and you alone do we turn for help If we look at this translation You alone do we worship and you alone do we turn for help. One might argue, where did we find, we don't see this in the Arabic word alone. I mean, as the Arabic translation, there is no Arabic word in it, in Yaqan Abudu, that uh, translates into alone. Where do we find this? When we bring Iyaka Na'abudu, well, within the Arabic grammar, it's supposed to be Na'abudu Ka. We worship you but when iyaka maf'ul comes first iyaka na'abudu you you do we worship that is, means the only when the maf'ul comes first within the arabic grammar that we study in seminary that uh, illustrates that it is that alone is there when iyaka comes first that you na'abudu when allah comes first and then na'budu, the action, the fa'l comes later. Iyaka means to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you alone. Na'budu, we worship. That alone comes into existence. That we only worship you Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we only come to you for help. That is, as far as the Arabic grammar, it's concern and why Allah, I mean, uh, maf'ul, iyaka, came first. And then na'budu. Uh, which is us, the fa'il and the fa'il came after that. That becomes a translation of that, that you alone do we worship and you alone do we turn for help. And also, one of the commentators was, uh, he was discussing, I mean, he was stating a good point that if we say, na'abudu ka, na'abudu means we worship, ka refers to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is called dhamir. When we say na'abudu ka, na'abudu first, we are discussing ourselves. We are mentioning ourselves first, na'abudu, we. And then ka, we worship you. But Quran, it's bringing iya ka. First Allah comes, then we come into this, even to statement. And within this, first Allah is there. I mean, Allah is there, infinite before and before and after. Uh, but within the even the structure of the sentence, it's first Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mentally, everything is Allah first and then us. We can't, I mean, it's not nice to say first, na'budu ka. Why to bring even iya ka? No, na'budu, when we say then, okay, we have a priority. We came first and then, oh Allah, we worship you. That which was, I, I thought to be interesting for me to share with you. After stating that all praise belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. And He is the Lord of the worlds, Rabbil Alameen. Maliki ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. All magnificent, all beneficent, all merciful. Master of the Day of judge, Judgment. And Maliki Yawm al -Din. Can we worship anything other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Intellectually, logically, we can't. If He is the one that start everything, and we start everything with Him. And he's the initiator, he's the creator, he's the generator. Everything starts with him. And he's the all beneficent, all merciful. Also, he is the master and the lord of all the worlds. And then he's also the master of the day of judgment. What else, whom else can we worship than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? It it's not logical to partner someone else and worship someone else besides him. And this was the message of all the prophets. We see that all the prophets that came, they would say, we have one example of it, chapter 23, 
verse 23, where Allah says, ma lakum min ilahin Worship Allah, you have no other God beside him. When Prophet Nuh came, Prophet Ibrahim, Prophet uh, Sulaiman, and all the other prophets that came within the verse, if you just uh, search this, you'll see all the prophets that they came and they were sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide people. They came and they discussed this verse and they said, they came to bring people to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have no other gods, God beside him. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is logical that again, since we went through all of these processes, him only we should worship and none beside him. Then, this is the purpose why we have been created. Within the Quran, there are three, four purposes mentioned why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us. One of those reasons why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us, it's for us to worship Him. Chapter 51, verse 56, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I did not create the jinn and the humans except, means the only reason that I created uh, the jinn and er, an ants, ghost and human being, I did not create the jinn and the humans except that they may worship me. So, Ibadatullah subhanahu wa ta'ala, reason why we have been created, us and the jinn. Which, if we think of it, that this is why we have been created, and this is the purpose behind our creation, so, uh, creation by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we won't go left and right. <coughs> We continue spending our time, every minute of our time, worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ibadatullah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Which inshallah, either in this episode or the next episode, we will discuss what do we mean by ibadah. Do we mean we should just sit on our prayer mats all day long and all night long to just keep praying and praying and supplicating and praying? Inshallah, we will discuss that if this is by the, the definition of ibadah. So, for us, it is very important to be Abdullah, to be a true person that is doing ibadah to Allah, worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, none by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And all of our ibadat must be toward Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, nothing but Him. You might say, Shaykh, of course everything that we do from our salah, from our zakat, from our hajj and all of our wajibats that we do, we're doing it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. True, but one can argue that when we are doing our ibadah, do we have our intention, is our intention sincere for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Khalisan, mukhlasan, sincerely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or we have someone else in mind? I'll give you an example. For example, we are praying in our masjid. No one is there. And we are reading the salah. Unfortunately, some people pray their salah quickly and fast. They just go through the salah, through the verses, through the arkan quickly. They just want to move on. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah rabbil alamin ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, maliq ya mudiniya. Quickly, quickly. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, qul wallah ahad Allah wa sallam. And then they go, subhanahu wa ta'ala, subhanahu wa ta'ala, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Quickly, they go through it. But as while they're praying and they are worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with their intention, as soon as somebody walks in to the masjid and maybe this person uh, that walked into the masjid, the person that is praying has some kind of business with him and he wants to show him that I'm sincere and I am a good Muslim and I pray my prayers good. Suddenly, as soon as that person walks in, he says, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Ar Rahmanir Rahim. Well, this worship was it only Ya Kenabu that we only do, we only we, <coughs> we you, you alone do we worship or my tone, my speed changed because someone else walked in. Have I not put partner with, in this salah with someone else? Or when I do something good and I do it qurbata Allah ta'ala, I'm, wait, I'm waiting for, some, for people to appreciate me and to acknowledge me. 
Well, in that case, it's not qurbat in Allah Ta'ala. It's not sincere for Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala. When we say, Iyaka na'abudu, you alone we worship and you alone do we turn for help and no one else, means throughout my work, after my work, before my work, every intention that I have, it's completely detached from everyone except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I only do it sincerely and purely and genuinely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and no one else. So the action plan will be that we should start analyzing and diagnosing our actions. That needs us to observe ourselves, think, ponder everything we do, think and testing our intention. How much of this intention, how much percentage was for Allah, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how much percentage was for me to either get acknowledgement, for me to get some kind of certificate, for me to get something in return, for me to be appreciated by people, for me to get something. Well, that much percentage we have according to hadith that Allah said, if you did something for me and also for other people, I give even my share and my portion <clears throat> to other people. Let them bless you. Let them reward you. Let them give you what you were thinking. So everything that we do, that is very, very important. Before we start, our intention to be qurbat in Allah Ta'ala, sincerely for sake of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala. So when we do something sincerely for Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala, especially our ibadat, Salah, Saum, Zakat, Hajj, Khums, all the other wajibat. First, it's Qurbat Allah Ta'ala. So when we have that intention, and Iyaka Na'bud, when we start Ibadah, we're doing something for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, we won't be rushing through it. We won't do a very bad job at it. No, we make sure we do something, we do our best in it. We are doing something for our Creator. So that's number one we started with. We think about it. Throughout what we are doing, throughout this affair or endeavor, we keep reminding that this is for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Qurbatan Allah ta'ala. At the end of it, even after that, we might start a project or a, a, an endeavor. Uh, started with Qurbatan Allah ta'ala. And we are thinking, And then through it, we have, And then through it, and at the end, we have Iyaka Na'abudu wa Iyaka Nasta'in. But after two, three days, four days, five days, we talk to people and we start showing off. We start having riya, show off to people that, okay, I did this. Or my ibadah, salah, uh, it might be interesting to say this joke. A person was praying and he was praying very nicely. In his sujood or ruku, he was saying, Subhana Rabbi al Azimi wa bihamdi. Rabbi salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. Subhanallah, subhanallah. He was reciting his salah because people were watching him. They said, wow, mashallah, he is praying very nicely and his pronunciation and his being humble and he's truly doing it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. While he was in his prayer, or in his prayer and reading, for example, Surah Al-Hamd, he paused and he looked toward them. He said, I'm fasting too. He wants to show off basically. Basically, his salah is invalid, invalidated and also none of them is accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he was showing off to people. So when we say we only worship you, do we only you alone do we worship and you alone do we turn for help, we should believe in it and we should act upon that everything we do, it's for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we read in the, in the Holy Quran that Rasulullah wa lakum fi Rasulullah uswatun hasana. The Rasulullah is our role model. He is, we did also in Tashahud, wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh. Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi First, he is abd. He's a true abid, abd, slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That his ibadah is genuine and he is abd first and then wa rasuluh. So, the level of being abd is higher than Rasul, than the Messenger. I shahadu anna Muhammadan abduhu first. Why? Because when he prayed, Iyaka na'abudu wa iyaka nasta'in, everything was for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and none but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the action plan will be, and inshallah, the rest of the discussion will come in our next episode, uh, which will be, what is ibadah?
in what kind of ibadah we mean and what we need to do to be completely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the action plan for this episode, again, we will remind ourselves. When we say again, there's a reason why every day we repeat Surah Al-Hamd again and again and again and again. It's because to remind us who we are worshipping, who we are truly worshipping and who we are returning back for help. That should be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Again, you alone do we worship and you alone do we turn. This should become every minute of our life that everything that we do, it's for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And inshallah, we will say that, okay, how about we're discussing Ahl al-Bayt, Ahl al-Bayt, Ahl al-Bayt. Inshallah, we will discuss it in the next episode. We will conclude this episode by praying for and begging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to hasten the appearance of our beloved Imam Imam Mahdi Ajalallah Ta'ala Faraj al-Sharif which is the most important dua Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Allahumma kun li waliyika al-Hujjat ibn al-Hasan Salawatuka alayhi wa ala abaih fi hadhi sa'ata wa fi kulli sa'ah waliyan wa hafidha wa qa'idan wa nasira wa dalilan wa ayna hatta tuskinahu ardaka taw'a wa tumatta'ahu fiha tawila barahmatika ya arhamar rahameen